everybody, this is Jim at sp500chart.com. It's almost 1.30 on Saturday afternoon here on the East Coast on March 4th, 2017. We're going to take a look and see what happened uh, in the S&P 500 chart for the week ending March 3rd. And we're going to might do this a little, just a little bit differently. And uh, just got some ideas I want to throw out here. And uh, I hope you'll bear with me, but I'm not going to do any of it until I remind you that the website and the video are for educational purposes only. Nothing stated at the site or in this video is intended to be used as investment advice. I can draw lines on charts, but you have to draw your own conclusions from your own research and make investment decisions that are suitable for your personal financial situation. I am not a licensed financial professional. Not, not not a voiceover talent either. I'm just a guy who draws lines on charts. So let's take a look. We're starting out on a weekly chart. This weekly chart goes all the way back. If we want it to, to the uh, bottom of that bear market back in March of 2009, when we bottomed out on March 9th to be exact, formed an inverted head and shoulders pattern, started to move back up, have made a series of uh, similar patterns. Here's a little inverted head and shoulders pattern. By the way, that was when I started my YouTube video because people back in the middle of the year of 2010, late summer, fall, were all talking about how this market is going to head down to 400. And I was going, no, it's not because we've got this inverted head and shoulders pattern here. Then we had another one. And then we started and look, if you, I'm, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not going to, I shouldn't say this, but if you listened to my videos back in the fall and the late summer of 2010, you would have saved yourself a lot of headache if you were listening to those naysayers who were saying we should be short at this point in time. Look where we are now. Those folks got wiped out. Okay, so where are, where are we right now? Well, we are in the middle of this Trump rally. And just so you put it in perspective, the Trump rally started right here and has run for about uh, five months or so. And it started really on the election day. You remember on election day, we were looking at what appeared to be a huge rout as bears were going to devour the S&P. The futures in the S&P were down at one point. Where is my chart? Come to daddy. Come on, don't do that to me. There it is. Wow. Um, so there we were. The futures were were pointing to a a uh, market where the S and P. I want to say, we, we it was it was just terrible. I mean, it was like I, I think the S and P was pointing at at one point to a future to a, an opening in the eighteen hundreds. It was just horrible. And then what happened? Instead, we rallied. That was one of the weirdest things. So what's happened uh, since that beginning of that Trump rally, um, if you will? Well, what we had was we started to, to come up in this ascending uh, wedge. We broke out of that, and instead of breaking down, we formed a consolidation diamond right here between these green lines, and we have been up ever since. We now appear to be trading in a... Uh, channel, I mentioned, <laughs> excuse me, I mentioned that channel uh, possibly uh, forming and saying, look to see if we get some support right around this level here, around 2375 or so. And if we zoom in on things, it's sort of looking like we might, because there we, we tagged about 2375, did not touch this line, and then we broke over this little, uh, very short-term line of resistance. Now, I want to I want to backtrack just for a second. So, so basically, what happened this week? Well, this week, we saw um, a little bit of weakness, and then we saw coming up off of this support line a quick move up to resistance, and then a two-day uh, pullback 
that looks to be back to support levels. I want to do something a little different now. That's the week. Okay, Th there's your week in review. We had identified, by the way, I kind of fiddled with these lines a little bit just to kind of see what's going on. It, it looks to my eye like we are probably poised for another rally this uh, upcoming week, by the way. But I want to show you something. If we go back to that weekly chart, I want to show you that there was a time, and you may remember this, there was a time when I was talking about the potential of a top forming in the way of a head and shoulders pattern. This is the left shoulder, there is the head, there's the right shoulder. We actually broke underneath the neckline early in 2016. And remember, we had, we'd had uh, some, some uh, support lines on our chart that said maybe, maybe we're, we could be saved from this pattern. And we were. But I want to remind you, a head and shoulders top that fails to break down and do what it is expected to do is not a sign of strength. It is a sign of a failed pattern. This pattern revealed something in the markets that is, I believe, still a sign of weakness. It's just that someone came along and bailed out the uh, S&P from, uh, from a, a, a what could have been a bad situation. And so what we end up with instead is an inverted head and shoulders pattern that points us up to our 2468 target, which is now um, about 3.5% away, I'm guessing. And wow, so there you have it. That's the big picture. Head and shoulders top, tried to break down, didn't. Then we formed an inverted head and shoulders, pulled, broke out, pulled back, and now we're headed up to 2468. So why, do I, why am I mentioning this? Well, because this is possibly a harbinger. What's a harbinger? A sign of something that could happen. Now, why am I mentioning this to you today? I'm mentioning this to you today because I saw a headline, and that headline just caught my eye. I'm going to show you what that headline is. And bear in mind, markets do not form tops when people are worried. P markets do not form tops when people think we're at a top. Markets form tops when everything is going great. There have been times, I think someone said back in 2000, there was a, a, a headline that said, the bull that won't stop. Well, when did it stop? 2007, headlines, wow, what a run, boy, howdy, we're just going to keep going. There was your top. So what's the headline I'm going to show you? Well, it's from Reuters. And I'm going to show you this headline. There it is. Investors bet Trump-fueled tech rally far from over. You should read that, I think, and be a little concerned. Because when investors really think a rally is far from over, what do they do? They put all of their money into the markets. And when people put all of their money into the markets, let me ask you, what fuel is left to take them up? It's not. If people put all of their money into the markets with this outlook in mind that the Trump-fueled tech rally is far from over, folks, that is has the potential of being a contrarian indicator. So that's why I'm talking about this. I think if and when we reach our target up here at 2468 to 2470 
at that point, I am personally going to view any advance and any further advance with just a little bit of skepticism. And I'm going to keep watching those headlines, and I want you to also. Because remember, when was the bottom back in March 9th of 2009? What was going on when the market hit its absolute lowest point? Did it was did someone come on the news in the afternoon on March 9th? I, was that a Tuesday? I don't know if it was or not. Did someone show up on the news and say, hey, everything's great. Everything's going to turn around now, and that marked the bottom. No, the bottom was hit in the midst of absolute despair. It was not good news that made that market turn around. It was just the fact that nobody could sell any more because everything had been squeezed out of the market over the past year and a half or so. And it culminated in that frenzy of, of selling action that broke every possible descending level of support. We blew out through every trend line that existed on the chart to the downside. And are we maybe starting to see signs of that now? Well, in the chart, not so fast on that. We are over this trend line, which I told you just, oh, I don't know. I don't really like that. Okay. But we watch it day by day, just the same. So that's just something for you to think about. So the week was basically, we, um, we broke out of our, uh, uh, out of this little consolidation pattern here that had been going on for about six days. And it looks like you know, at the end of the week we're pulling back. Watch this line right here. If if this line breaks down, then uh, then then we could possibly get some support on this rising line. But remember, we can't count on that like you normally would if it had been flat or if it were even descending. So all, the moral of the story is this. Watch the headlines. That one caught my eye. And that's the first one I've seen um, in, in years uh, that, that makes me just kind of go, hmm, isn't that interesting? Because, you know, when everybody's all in, we will be at a top. Even if, the, even if the, 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 the fundamental news, even if the economy is hitting on all cylinders, even if we're growing at 6%, uh, per year, even if everything is great, even if companies are bringing their uh, their their uh, 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 businesses back on shore and they're hiring people, even with all of that, if everyone has gone all in on the market, we will be at a top, period, because there's nobody left to go in. Have you ever heard of the greater fool theory? The greater fool theory says that some things just keep going up and up and up and up and people keep buying and selling and buying and selling in hopes that there'll be somebody, well, a greater fool than they are that they can unload on. And at some point in time, nobody can unload anymore. And I'm not saying that, that the markets are there to fool people and to trick people, but what I am saying is this. If there's nobody on the sidelines with significant amounts of cash, the market can't go up anymore. So there you have it. That's my little change of, of, of thought processes that took place just this morning when I saw that headline. So there you have it, guys. There is your weekly review, your editorial, and, and your little dose of contrarian thinking from yours truly. Um, I'm not saying we're at a top. All I'm saying is, hmm, that's interesting. So, obviously, there's no confirmed top, but we haven't even reached what should be a, conf uh, a confirmed target level up here at 2468. We're close. We're getting closer all the time. But, um, guys, just keep an eye on it. And uh, if you are not a subscriber to sp500chart.com, you need to be. Uh, not because I tell you what to do, but because we look at the chart every day and we, and we talk about things like this. If nothing else, it keeps the topic alive and active. 
and we do try to make as much sense of the chart as we can. But most importantly, stay engaged with this and protect yourselves when you think you need some protection. So there you have it. There's your weekly review for the week ending March 3rd, 2017. Thanks for taking time out of your day to watch this. And as always, thank you for your very, very kind support. Take care.